Here we're going to look at an interesting operator on a function called the Schwarzian derivative. So we want to start with something that I'll call a nice function. So here it needs to be three times differentiable and also the first derivative can't be zero just for this thing to be well defined. And then we can define this thing called the Schwarzian derivative which I'll make this script d of f. So it'll be f triple prime of x over f prime of x minus three halves f double prime of x over f prime of x quantity squared. So I want to notice that this looks like some sort of fancy second derivative. And you might say, well, how is it a fancy second derivative? I see first, second, and third derivatives in this object. Well, of course, this is like a loose explanation for what this type of thing is, but the way I like to think of it as being a second derivative is that here we've got a third derivative over a first derivative. So very, very loosely, that cancels down to a second derivative. And then here we have a second derivative over a first derivative. That very loosely cancels down to a first derivative, but then we square it back to a second derivative. So that's why I say that this is loosely acting like a second derivative. In other words, it's measuring the same type of stuff that some sort of second derivative would. So there's a bunch of things that you can do with this uh, operator. Like maybe we could solve some differential equations with this operator. And that's in essence what we're gonna do here today, but we're gonna solve maybe the simplest type of differential equation, which leads to the question, what are the Schwarzian lines? So what do I mean by lines? Well, think about a linear function and what properties it has. Well, it has the property that if you take its second derivative, you get zero. Now, since this is some sort of generalization of the second derivative, functions that become zero after taking the Schwarzian derivative could be thought of as Schwarzian lines. So that's exactly what we're gonna try to do here is determine all functions f that it satisfy this df equals zero. Okay, so let's get into the calculation. So if we need df to equal zero, then that means we need this expansion over here to equal zero. So let's write out what that means. So we'll need f triple prime of x over f prime of x minus three halves f double prime of x over f prime of x squared equals zero. Now I'm gonna simplify that a little bit. Well, maybe not simplify it, but rewrite it a little bit. So maybe I'll multiply everything by two to bring this two into the numerator. And then I'll also combine these things by finding a common denominator. So let's see what we got here. So we'll have at two times F triple prime of X. Giving myself a common denominator means I need to divide this term by f prime over f prime. So I'll also need an f prime of x here. And then this will be minus three times f double prime of x quantity squared. And now this is all over f prime of x squared. So we need this to be equal to zero. So now look at how this is shaping up. We have the difference of the two, of two things in the numerator, and then we've got this denominator which is squared. So in my mind, this is starting to look like something that has the standard quotient rule applied to it. The real question is how do we mold this into something that is useful that has had the quotient rule applied to it? And it's actually a bit tricky to get to. But after looking at it for a little bit, you'll see that if you multiply this entire equation by a certain combination of f double prime and f prime, you'll be good to go. So I'll multiply the numerator by f double prime of x times f prime of x squared. Then I'll multiply the denominator by f prime of x to the fourth power. And I think there's like a more exploratory way to get to this guess, but this is maybe a refined explanation of what you would see after doing that exploration. Okay, so let's multiply that through and see what we are left with. So for this term, we'll be left with two times F triple prime of X times F double prime of X times F prime of X quantity cubed. So like I said, that's our first term. And for our second term, we'll have minus 
three times f double prime of x cubed times f prime of x squared. And then this is going to be all over f prime of x to the sixth power. And then we have this is equal to zero. Now we want to look carefully at this object and notice that it looks like something that has had the quotient rule applied to it. So let's think about this term right here as having stayed fixed. And then notice that this bit right here can be seen as the derivative with respect to x of f double prime of x quantity squared. So by the chain rule, the two comes down, we have f double prime of x and then the derivative of f double prime of x. Okay, so that's good to keep in mind. And now let's see what we have over here. So we can split this off into one copy of f double prime of x squared. I guess I should say two copies. And then what are we left with after we split that off? Well, notice we have exactly the derivative of this box. So let's maybe notice that what's left over after that is the derivative of f prime of x quantity cubed. Furthermore, we see that this denominator is in fact f prime of x cubed all squared. So we really do have the quotient rule here, and maybe we could see that by seeing that this is like u prime v, and then u times v prime all over v quantity squared. But now, thinking about the quotient rule, that tells us that the derivative with respect to x of u over v equals zero. But notice that u is f double prime of x quantity squared, and then v is f prime of x quantity cubed. Great. So just to reiterate, taking the derivative of this expands out into this line that's above. But now by the normal derivative rules, we know that if the derivative equals zero, then this guy right here equals a constant. So we have f double prime of x squared over f triple prime of x cubed equals some constant, which I'll call capital A. So we're part of the way towards answering this question. Okay, so let's get rid of this and then we'll move on to the next step. On the last board, we ended up at the following spot. So I had a slight typo, but I fixed it. We had f double prime of x squared over f prime of x cubed equals a, where a is a constant. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides, but as I take the square root, I'll just replace a with a again instead of the square root of a, as right at this moment, it's an arbitrary constant. So let's do that. That'll give us f double prime of x over f prime of x to the three halves equals our new constant a like that. But now notice that we can take the antiderivative of this left hand side pretty easily. So let's maybe do that. We'll take the antiderivative with respect to x here. We'll take the antiderivative with respect to x here. Now, if you want to think about it like this, you could do this via a u substitution where u equals f prime of x. That's going to make du equal to f double prime of x dx. So notice we have this is like u to the three halves in the denominator. And then in the numerator, we have our du earmuffs like that. So we can use just the standard power rule in order to solve for, in order to take this antiderivative. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. So we will have over here on the left-hand side, well, it's going to be u to the minus half divided by minus half. And so dividing by minus half is like multiplying by minus two. So we've got minus two over u to the half, but u is equal to f prime. So we've got f prime to the half here. Now this is going to equal ax plus another constant, which I'll call b. Now I'm gonna take the reciprocal of both sides. And while I take the reciprocal of both sides, I'm gonna take this minus two and absorb it into these two arbitrary constants. So it's pretty typical to do this absorption of constants until you get to the very end. So let's see what that leaves us with. So we'll have f prime of x to the half equals one over ax plus b. But now we can square both sides and get that the derivative of f of x equals um, one over ax plus b quantity squared. 
But at this point, we can easily take the antiderivative of both sides and we've got a formula for f. So notice we'll have f of x equals one over ax plus b, where again, I've absorbed whatever constants come out of the anti-differentiation into capital A and capital B, but then we'll also need a constant for integration, so that'll be plus c. Now you could put this together into one object if you wanted to, but maybe I'll leave that for you guys to do. So I'll just put like a green dot. If you guys wanna put that together into one object, you can. Okay, so we've answered the question, what are the Schwartzian lines? Well, they are functions that look like this. And that's a good place to stop.